All right, 2D is composite function. Um, those are pretty, pretty short today, so there's plenty of time for questions and time to work. And I do believe you guys have seen this stuff before. Don't forget to jot down a stop box. We're going to come back to that stop box at the end. And again, composite function. Are you ready? All right. So if I've got two functions, f of x and g of x, this symbol right here with the f and that little circle and the g and the parentheses x, what it means is I'm putting that g of x function and I'm substituting it into the f of x function. So we don't say that the way I just said it. We would say f of g of x. So just the g of x, you know, we talked about that this week, g of x, but this would be f of g of x. You guys have never seen it before? Oh, you don't like it? It sucked? Okay, well, hopefully I can make it suck less. That would be one of my goals here. Because we really just substitute one function into the other function. And one of my students, I think the first year that I taught this class, really, really liked, every time he saw that with the F in that little circle, he wrote this down, at, like with the parentheses, because that helps him remember, like, let's substitute that G into the F. Just like yesterday, or the day, not yesterday, the day before, when we were plugging in numbers into those, well, he went ahead and did that to kind of remind himself. So you can use that as a strategy as well. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you two functions, F of X and G of X, and we're going to do like four different situations with those same functions to kind of cover those bases. And the functions we have are f of x is 3x minus 2, and g of x is x squared plus 6x. So again, just make sure you can write those and you can see those. We're going to use those same two functions on the next four examples. So when it says f of g of x, remember we are going to write it like this. And we'll have to put that g of x into the f of x function. So I'm going to have to take this whole thing and put it into the x. So I would have 3, but instead of x, I'm going to use parentheses and write that whole expression for g of x x squared plus 6x, and then minus 2. Wait, what? What happened? So, like, this went right here where the x is. The 3 is still there, the minus 2 is still there, right? And blue, but instead of x, I have to put the g of x function in that. So instead of x, I've got that x squared plus 6x. So it's like substituting, but instead of just being a number, like substituting 10, it's that whole expression. Once we get this far, we just have to kind of distribute combined like terms. So on this one, I can distribute that 3. So I have 3x squared plus 18x minus 2. I don't have anything else I can do then, because I can't combine those x's. I'm not asking you to factor at this point. We just want to combine all of our like terms. Any questions before we get to another example? So our next example, like I said, is going to use the exact same g of x and f of x, but this time it's g of f of x. So that means that what I'll have to do is put my f of x function into the g of x.
which this is a little bit more complicated than the last one, because when I look at g of x, I've got two x's. So I'm going to have to take this, put it in this x spot right here, and put it in this x spot right here. So this is what that will look like then, is I'm going to use parentheses and I've got 3x minus 2, but I've got to square it because I've got the squared, and I've got plus 6, but instead of x, I have to write once again 3x minus 2. I know you guys all have the skills to FOIL and to distribute and to combine like terms. I know you guys have those skills. We've reviewed them, we've used them last chapter. But the, I don't want to say exactly new, but I guess new for this year, but you probably, like you said, did it in the past, is putting that into that other function. So any questions about that substitution part of it? So then we want to, like I said, FOIL and all of that. And um, you can remember that if you want to, you can write 3x plus 2 and 3x plus 2 and do all that foiling, I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut. So then to get my middle term, I do 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, times 2 is negative 12x, plus 4. Again, that's a shortcut, but you can foil it out. I know you all have those skills. And then I'm also going to distribute the 6, so I have plus 18x minus 12. This one does have some like terms that we can combine. So I can take that negative 12x plus 18x. I can also take the 4 minus 12 to have 9x squared plus 6x minus 8 when I combine all those like terms. You guys accept no problem. Just because you hated it, is it okay? Yeah. Okay. I want I want to make it as like easy as I can. I'm not like trying to make it tricky right now. Okay. We still we're gonna look at two more. It's not gonna take that long, but two more. Any questions? Okay. Same functions. This time it's f of f of x. Okay, so I don't even know how to color code this, so I'm not even going to. But what I need to do then is I actually have to kind of plug that function into itself. So I know my original f of x is 3 something minus 2, right? I would put something in the x spot, so I just kind of like left that blank right there for now. What goes in there? Yeah, the 3x minus 2. This is f of x, so that has to be what goes in here. It's a little bit weird because it's plugging it into itself, so are we okay? Why is there a g? This problem just doesn't have anything to do with g. Good question. You know, sometimes you've got like a story problem, like the other day you have like a number you don't use. Well, like, this might be full of the problems that were made. You do the f of g and the g of x, and then you've got an f of f to kind of take a look at. Once we get that piece, like I said, I know you guys know how to distribute. You can distribute your 3. So you've got 9x minus 6 minus 2. And I know you can combine your like terms. We have 9x minus 8 on that one. Any questions? So the last example, I'm actually going to show you guys two different ways to do it. Because I like my way, right? Because I know myself, I know how I learn and how I think. But I want to show you guys another way that might work better for you. Okay? So we're going to do it in two different ways. 
And what this is, is it's f of g of 2. So I'm just going to split my screen in half to show you the two different approaches you can take. What I like to do, and I don't even know why, I don't have any good reasons for you on this one, it's just what I like to do. I like to find f of g of x first. So we already did that, right? That was example one. We found that f of g of x equals, and I'm just, I'm not doing this in my head. I'm writing it from example one. It equals 3x squared plus 18x minus 2. Right? If you guys look at your example one, that's what you got for that problem. Are you with me? So I don't need to redo that work. I already did it. Then, the thing is, is that we're plugging 2 in there. So I'm going to have to plug in 2 to both x spots. So I have 3 times 2 squared plus 18 times 2 minus 2. So then, once again, I know you guys have all these skills. Don't forget your order of operations. Let 2 squared becomes 4. And when I add those and then subtract 2, I end up with 46. So, I mean, we did some of that on Monday, right? When we like plugged in numbers into our functions and we got our outputs, our answers, right? <laughs> so, I like to get my function and then plug my number in. The other way to do it, which might be a little bit less work, is to plug 2 in right away. So kind of ignoring all this, I know that I have to do f of g of 2, right? Except for that didn't work out for one to two propellers. So what I can do is I can plug 2 into those x box for g right away. So I would have the f piece, which is 3 times something minus 2, right? And then, when I plug g into here, I'm going to put the 2 in there right away. So instead of x squared, it's 2 squared. And instead of 6x, it's 6 times 2. I, just, I know that some students really like doing it that way last year, so I just wanted to kind of show you that option. So I can plug 2 in there right away. And then I can just start simplifying all of this. But are there any questions of what I did? I put 2 in the x spot right away, and then I put g into that function. So now I can start evaluating all that. So in my parentheses, I've got 2 squared is 4, and 6 times 2 is 12. 4 plus 12 is 16. I end up with 48 minus 2. And I still end up with 46. So whether you like to have that function and then plug in your 2, or whether you want to plug in the 2 and plug in the function and go for it, it's really up to you, your choice as far as what makes more sense to you. Okay? Now, are there any questions? Anything I can do to make it better? Or is that just like the amount of work? It's like, really? Okay. All right. Very simple little stat box coming up, and then you'll get your assignment. What was that kind of tip that you can always write down to remind yourself? f of g of x equals, kind of finish that off. Hopefully you wrote that, right? So remember we can just substitute that in there. It's a little reminder. Okay. Remember when it says one, you have to do all the pieces of one. So if it has different parts to it, you have to do all of those for one, two, three, five, and seven.